All right, hey everybody. So it's almost 9 p.m. here, and we are about to take delivery of something special. And I'm really excited. I've got some friends coming over. It's gonna be a little bit of a trick to get this thing maneuvered into our backyard, but fingers crossed. So here we go, 1975, right here. Doing a little bit of a walkthrough of everything. Still have the, the tags, haven't put in the bolts in, haven't put in the tail trues because I'm gonna do the linseed oil application here in a bit. There's that massive smokestack. Looking at these casters down here, um, the one over here by the firebox, these don't swivel, but these over here do. And from some of the pictures, it had looked like the ones over here had the um, kind of a locking mechanism, but I don't see them on here. So I'll have to get some kind of wedges. And then you see that little drain right down there. So I've got one of these, I don't know, no name brand kind of luggage, um, kind of weight testing devices. I'm trying to see if there's a max weight. I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to put this around the handle just to test how much um, force, how much muscle is required <laughs> to, to lift up this firebox lid here. So tear it over here at zero. We good. All right, here we go. Thirty, it got up to thirty-four pounds, and then now it's at twenty-six, and then going lighter and lighter. So this right here is like lifting thirty-five pounds. All right, so this is going to be the main chamber. Now I'm going to test to see what it feels like lifting this thing up by one hand. Let's go ultra wide. Okay, here we go. All right, he's got an ultra wide angle, so this thing was teared out at zero. One-handed. <laughs> I don't even think I can do this one-handed. Here we go. Oh dear Lord. So right here, it's at 55 almost. I'm weak, as you can tell. I'm so sorry and ashamed. Here, hold on one sec. Let me, okay, here we go. So still tear it in at zero. So the highest point of weight is right about here. It reads about 58, it actually triggered 60. So it's about 60 pounds, maybe at the highest, depending on how much momentum you're getting. Oh God, it's like a, oh. It's like a, um, what is that in, in professional weightlifting? A clean? <laughs> oh God. It's interesting, there's a spot that kind of looks like this on the firebox as well, and I was like, Kind of peeved by it because I was like, gosh, it would be funny if the smoke kind of slowly works its way out of here, but I imagine it's not that big of a deal. But welds are clean all the way around. Take a look at that. And again, since I decided to go with the top rack, 
part of that price upgrade includes the two additional ports and the two additional uh, tail trues. Okay, let kind of take a look. Haven't washed or cleaned any of this stuff yet. Let's get you back there to take a look at the welds there. Okay. All right, and then we take a look at these bottom grates. See the drain down there. There you see the smoke collector. And this is the, the port here for the probe wires. Pretty cool. Come back over here to the firebox. Uh, making that look easy. All right, take a little quicker close up of all the edges here. And this is that spot I was talking about earlier, right here. And then you can see the welds right there, looking pretty clean. I can't really tell, but like, look at that thing, it's huge. I was joking, I was gonna throw my kids in here. I think they're a little excited about that possibility. <laughs> okay, and then, I have to put this stuff in there. See, I haven't even taken off the zip tie yet. But this is how it came, folks. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching the video. Just wanted to answer a few questions that came in on the YouTube channel regarding the 1975. Uh, the first one was, how many briskets do you think will fit? Um, along with the top rack, my guess, I don't know, with um, a trimmed down six to eight pound brisket, you're gonna get at least eight of those on there comfortably. Personally, I wouldn't put more on that, but that's just me, uh, just given the, the heat coming out of the firebox and how much more crispy it'll get on that side. Uh, smoke leakage on the cowboy grill. That was actually one of my hesitations as well before getting the cowboy grill. I was worried about the smoke leakage. And in fact, I, I even emailed in and asked about that. So interestingly enough, I'm not getting any leakage out of the cowboy grill. If anything, there's a little bit out of the main chamber lid. Um, but it's, it goes away after the grill warms up a little bit. Um, so yeah, no problems there. No regrets actually with the cowboy grill either. I've even cooked a few things uh, directly on top of that, um, that grate in the firebox and it's been great. Um, external maintenance after cooks. Um, if you go to the Qtorials um, YouTube page, I think it's a JD, like he walks you through how to do the linseed oil application and I think he says he only does it twice a year and leaves his smoker out in the backyard uncovered. Um, in my experience so far, after owning it for a few months now, um, it's, it's pretty similar. I did the linseed oil application as well. Actually, if you, that little montage that you just saw where the grill just looked a lot cleaner and shinier, that was after the linseed oil application, it's held up just fine. So I would recommend maybe following that or I don't know, if you have some leftover beef tallow or whatever it is, just kind of spray it on the outside periodically. Um, how long did it take from ordering to receiving it? Um, I ordered this thing, let's see, back in April. So yeah, it took about five, a little over five months to get it to the door. And I did use the economy service. And um, overall, it went fine. But let me get into just a few kind of pros and cons before I close out this video. Um, pros, this thing is 850 pounds, like it's well built thick steel and coming from my old Oklahoma Joe's, which I think weighs in at about 150 pounds. I mean, this thing is like, it looks like a locomotive. It kind of works like one in the sense that it takes longer for the heat to kind of come up, but it holds that temp so much better. The draw through is amazing. Love the huge firebox. Um, like I said, holds temperature really well. Um, but a few kind of things that kind of irked me along the way and still do. Um, 
it just for those of you who haven't ordered yet or maybe you're in the process, um, for me personally, the ordering process slash communication process throughout the build uh, up to delivery was a little frustrating. Um, and I say that coming from um, a time where we get Amazon Prime one day, two day, and you know everything is like over communicated. Um, it was just at times frustrating because I didn't know what was going on. And I think during the time Workhorse um, also changed building facilities, so that delayed my order even more. So it didn't meet the original deadlines that were promised. And so that was you know a little frustrating. However, every time I emailed, I did get I would say a pretty timely response and a friendly response, letting me know what was going on and what I should expect. Um, the other thing is regarding the uh, the casters, or is it casters, pneumatic wheels, whatever it is, the four wheels on the bottom. On the pictures on the website, it shows that they have a locking mechanism. Um, as you could see from my video, there aren't any on mine or the ones that I've seen uh, other folks, those of you, I don't know, if, if, you, if you have them, let me know. Um, but I haven't seen any of the recent folks who picked up a workhorse pits have those locking wheels. And so you just have to make sure you have um, some, some kind of block or chuck that prevents the smoker from moving around if you have it on an uneven surface. So um, there's that. Um, so far, I put in about five to six different cooks probably more than that. And I did notice that the grease does sometimes drain back into the firebox and uh, one or two times it actually caught. It wasn't crazy, um, just kind of moved the ashes around a little bit and it was fine. And I, I, I know the service is level, I put a leveler on the top of the smoker as well. So I don't, and I don't think it's built crooked, but because the firebox is so much heavier, um, you do notice it on the wheels, the, the ones where the firebox kind of squishes down over time if it's not moving around. So I would imagine is that it lends itself to a slight tilt. Um, so on my setup currently, I have like these little kind of wooden shims underneath that side to kind of bring it, um, if anything, kind of tilt it a little bit more towards the drain so the grease isn't working its way towards the firebox. Okay, so that's all I've got for now. Um, cook videos are coming soon. If you have any questions that I did not answer, I'd be happy to answer them either in the comments, put it together a uh, put together a video short if, if need be or address it in the next video. And I think that is it. Thank you all so much. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video of Who's Smoking?